Hello. So let's start the chapter eight, uh, management of transaction exposure. This chapter discusses various methods available for the management of transaction exposure facing multinational firms. This chapter usually tied on together uh, chapter five, six, and seven. Um, so if you really don't understand five, six, seven, then you probably have some trouble to read the chapter. So I suggest you go back to five, six, seven to uh, fully understand this chapter. So uh, let's move on. First of all, chapter eight, nine, 10 talks about three different types of exposure. Starting with the transaction exposure, transaction exposure is the sensitivity of realized domestic currency value because the firm used the domestic currency value of the firm's contractual cash flow denominated in foreign currencies to unexpected exchange rate changes. So if the exchange rate changes, then firm may have the different cash flow from their contract because they need to convert the foreign currency to the domestic currency. So chapter eight mainly talks about this transaction exposure. The next one is the economic exposure. Economic exposure is the extent to which the value of the firm would be affected by unanticipated change in exchange rate. Mostly this is about the economic situation. So such as the, well, if the exchange rate changes, then the cost of import increases or decreases, or you, your competitive, uh, competence changes basically in terms of the price competitive competitiveness so um that's economic exposure the third one is translation exposure translation exposure is about the financial statement so if they consolidate the financial statement so and multinational firms need to consolidate their financial statement with the company in foreign branches and if their exchange rate changes then it affects the uh, firm's accounting statements. That's called the translation exposure. Now, from now on, we will see the trans transaction exposure in this chapter, and we will see how to hedge, how to avoid this risk. So we start from the contract, so-called the Ford and Futures first. So as you all know, the Ford contract is the contract that promise to buy or sell some security, some asset in the future at a uh, contracted price on the maturity date. This is called the fourth contract. So you can actually uh, hedge, you can avoid the risk by using the fourth contract. So for example, this is the importer's uh, perspective. So if you expect the all the foreign currency in the future. So you, you import something, then you need to pay the foreign currencies to the foreign uh, supplier. You can hatch by agreeing today to buy foreign currency in the future at a set price by entering into long position in the for the contract. Which means that, so long position means what? Long position is buy position, right? So you can set a price, well, certain price and you can just fix the price in the future so that you don't need to worry about the change in exchange rate. So that's import side. Export, now you receive foreign currency because you sell something to the foreign country, right? So if you are going to receive foreign currency in the future from the foreign customer, you may agree to sell the foreign currency in the future at a set of price by entering the short position in a fourth country. So export side, you can set a short, you can enter to the short position. Import side, you can uh, enter to the long position. So how to hedge it? This is example. A US based importer of Italian shoes has just ordered next year's inventory. So you basically import shoes from Italia, Italy. <coughs> Uh, you owe 100 million euro in due in one year. So you need to pay this 100 million euro 
in one year. If they import it by 100 euro, 100 billion euro at a fourth exchange rate of 1.15 dollar per euro, the cash flow maturity looks like this. So what you should do is you basically have to pay this one mil, 100 million euro, right? That's what you need to do. I think that they actually put the 1 million. So suppose this is just a 1 million, okay? So let's correct this to just 1 million euro, okay? Right, then you, you should pay 1 million euro, you receive shoes, right? So you basically set up for a contract that, well, we're gonna exchange our dollar per euro dollar fifteen cents. So you pay to pay dollar fifteen cents times size is one million euro here. So one point one five million dollars actually paid to the fourth contract pound counterpart, and you're gonna receive million euro and then pay Italian supplier. So you fix this exchange rate year before. Doesn't matter whether this exchange rate changes to differently, you will control the risk. You just think that, that you are going to pay $1.15 million. Now you don't have to worry about like the increase in other like exchange rate or decrease in exchange rate. Another example, your firm is a UK based exporter of bicycles. So you basically export the bicycle from the United Kingdom. So you probably your pound based company you have sold 2.5 million euro worth of bicycle to, to an Italian retailer. So euro, the Italy used a euro. Payment in euro is, in due, is due in six months. So six months later, you will receive the euro. Your firm wants to hatch the receivable into pounds. So this is a scheduled pound and euro forward rate. Now you can have this basically six months rate, right? So see what happened here. So first what you can do is the export has to convert this 2.5 euro receivable first in dollar then into pounds. So this is called a cross currency hatch because you basically have pound per dollar for the country and the euro per dollar for the country. You may find the pound to euro for the contract too, but if you don't have that choice, then you can use US dollars, that's a common currency, right? Uh, to get uh, get to get hatched using the cross currency hash. So what you can do is you, you first you have to convert these 2.5 receivable, a million euro receivable into dollar, then into pounds. So what you can do is you can sell this 2.5 euro receivable for six months for bid rate of dollar, the 80 cents per euro. So if you see this, six months euro bid rate is 80 cents, right? So you can use this rate. And then what you can do is, well, we can do this with the short position with 26 month Euro futures contract. So this case now we actually use the futures contract uh, and the, the size of futures contract is 125 Euro. Okay. They basically, so the 20 contract is 2.5 million per and then $125,000 contract. So if the size of contracts, 125,000 euro, then you need to short 20 contracts. So you're selling these 2.5 billion 2 uh, euro for the six months toward bid rate, 0 0.8 per year generate $2 million. So that's 2 million because you, you have 2.5 million euro and you basically get the 80% dollar amount, right? So $2 million euro. 
After six months, there's a forward rate, six month forward rate, $1.28 per pound, right? Two million, you convert this one. So now if the size of the contract is 62,500 um, pounds, then the, what you, you should do is you, should, you need to buy 1,562,500 pounds, pretty pound. So you basically have to loan 25 contract that you can get pounds. So what you can do is, well, basically you, have, you, you are going to receive the 2.5 million euro. You wanna make sure that you're gonna get this 1,562,500 British pounds because in this example, there's no foreign contract, futures contract between euro and pound. You use dollar contracts, so you, you basically sell this amount of euro to dollar first. And then you, you, re, you get this dollar, and then you, you also uh, have a forward contract dollar to pounds, so that eventually you, you, you receive euro, you change to dollar, and you change to pound. You can do the cross country, uh, cross currency hatch. And this is the number of contract you need. You need 20 short contract for euro to dollar and 25 long contract from dollar to pounds. Okay. So, uh, and for this and futures contract is pretty similar contract actually. Uh, there's certain, uh, it's just as a little bit, little differences, you know, a few differences differences between the forward and futures. A futures contract is not as suitable as the forward contract for hedging purpose, however. Because the futures is very structural uh, contract, you know. So you go to CME group and you buy futures. So futures is structural one, but you cannot choose. So futures contract are not a standardized instrument, so a firm can only hedge approximately, not exactly. Due to the marking to market property, so they basically change the value daily basis, right? As we saw in the previous chapters, there are interim cash flow prior to the maturity date because they change daily, they, they basically change the account daily basis. So cash flow occur even before the maturity date. So it may have to be invested at an uncertain interest rate, which means that you may have certain in the cash flow generated, then you need to reinvest it, that so there's a reinvestment rate risk. For a contract, you don't have to worry because the, they only uh, deliver at a delivery date, basically delivery currency is a promise, it's promised on delivery dates. Futures contract, the account change daily basis, so you may have additional cash flow, Either way, like the positive, negative, then you may be exposed to the uncertain interest rate. So to hatch, fourth contract is probably easier. Using ha using futures are more di more difficult. So next part, we will see uh, the the hatching using uh, hatch using the money market securities.